External respiration, as we have seen, takes place in the lungs. Internal respiration takes place in every cell of the body. Blood, which has circulated in the lungs, taking up oxygen and giving up surplus carbon dioxide, returns to the heart and from there is distributed all over the body, carrying oxygen and many other substances to the tissues. Let us look at part of a muscle. In this case, the type of muscle which enables the body to move. Such muscles are made up of bundles of fibers supplied with blood from an extensive network of capillary blood vessels. Let us look at one of these muscle fibers. Each fiber is a modified cell. As blood passes slowly along the capillaries, oxygen leaves the hemoglobin of the red blood corpuscles and enters the muscle fiber. As it gives up oxygen, the blood becomes darker. Food and many other substances are also carried to and from the muscle fibers in the blood. One of the food substances, a kind of sugar, helps to provide the energy for muscle work. The sugar, which contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, passes out of the blood and is built up into the cell substance. In the presence of oxygen, which is constantly entering the muscle fiber from the blood, oxidation and other chemical changes take place within the fiber. As a result, energy is released and carbon dioxide and water are formed. The carbon dioxide passes out of the cells into the blood and is carried away into the veins. This process, in which oxygen passes out of the blood into the cells and carbon dioxide passes out of the cells into the blood, is called internal respiration. By means of internal respiration, food substances are oxidized and energy is released. Some of the energy is used for work and some, in the form of heat, helps to maintain body temperature. In the case of muscle fibers, the energy used for work is employed either in shortening the muscle or in increase of tension. Blood from the capillaries carrying carbon dioxide produced in the oxidation of food substances passes on into the veins in which it is carried back to the heart. Returning to the lungs, the blood gives up surplus carbon dioxide and takes up a new supply of oxygen for distribution to the body. The energy released through the oxidation of food substances is needed by every part of the body. The cells, which make up the liver, for example, use up energy in carrying out chemical processes. The various types of cells forming the tissues of the alimentary canal use energy in carrying out the muscular and chemical processes of digestion. Whatever the nature of the work, oxygen is necessary to liberate the energy to do it. By breathing, the supply of oxygen to the blood is constantly renewed. In the air sacs of the lungs, oxygen passes into 
and carbon dioxide passes out of the blood. This is called external respiration. The oxygen is carried in the blood to every cell of the body. Within the cells, there is a reversal of the exchanges which take place in the air sac. Therefore, oxygen leaves and carbon dioxide enters the blood. This is called internal respiration. The supply of oxygen from the blood brings about the oxidation of food substances within the cells, a process which liberates. The cells of the body cannot store oxygen. The source from which the blood renews its supply of oxygen is the air surrounding the body. To live, the body, therefore, has to breathe. 